Hi. Yes, I'm Miles Collins. I'm a partner engineer with HPE Vertica. And I'm here to talk to you about how you can use Vertica um, along with Spark, um, Spark architecture. Um, so uh, if you're not familiar with Vertica, the Vertica Analytics Platform, it is a database. Um, it is built for extreme speed. Uh, this slide says 500%. We certainly have lots of uh, evidence that it often does much more than that. Um, it's incredibly scalable, huge workloads, hundreds of billions, trillions of rows, no problem. Um, it is a standard uh, interface, so uh, we support uh, ANSI standard SQL. It's, it's actually ISO standard, but I'll roll with it. Everyone says ANSI. Um, and it's fully ACID compliant. So if you've used any relational database in your career, you will very quickly feel comfortable with Vertica. And we, uh, we are significantly lower cost over legacy platforms. Okay, um, so an example of how they, you can use them together. So you've got your data sources, your logs, uh, user tracking, you've got conventional data sources, online transaction systems, and that sort of thing. The data goes into Kafka, and from Kafka, you can go to Spark, of course, uh, for your ETL stream processing. Um, uh, you probably, most of you have been doing that. You process your data, you send it back out to Kafka. But you can, uh, Vertica integrates very well with Kafka. We have Kafka connection, and so uh, the data can go directly from Kafka to Vertica, where you can then later access it with Spark directly because we have a Spark to Vertica connector, bi-directional. Um, if your data is being accumulated in a Hadoop data lake uh, and you, you have it in ORC or Parquet uh, format, you can access that from Vertica because we have a lot of integration with Hadoop and we can even uh, access uh, ORC and Parquet files as though they were native Vertica files. So you can, um, you can read and write them and you can query them, predicate push down, joins, you have the full power of uh, standard SQL on your ORC and Parquet files. And you have this extra nice advantage that um, the lots of analytic and reporting third party tools that may or may not work with uh, Hadoop and Spark or may not have full functionality with Hadoop and Spark or maybe don't have great performance with Hadoop or Spark will work very well with Vertica because we're all about the ecosystem and I'll go into that a little bit more in a few minutes. Um, so here's a use case of an oil and gas customer so you see these, uh, they're hard to read, these orange flags are sensors. So uh, vibration, temperature, flow, um, vibration. So we have lots of sensors. The data is going in through uh, Kafka and then into Spark, pretty typical. Um, you can do your Spark analysis on it, of course, but then you can write the results into Vertica if you want to take advantage of some of the advantages of Vertica that I just discussed. Or you could, of course, write it off to HDFS and Vertica could access them from HDFS. But then your data is available, um, uh, your data is available through Vertica and Vertica can reside on premises or in the cloud as it's shown here and you'll notice we're cloud agnostic. You don't, you're not stuck with just one cloud if you want to be on Azure, Amazon, that's your choice. We run on commodity hardware, whatever cloud you want, on-premise, hybrid, your choice. Uh, freedom is one of our mottos, and if you come down to our booth and grab a T-shirt, it says that on the back. Um, so a little bit about uh, what goes on behind the scenes in Vertica. So like I said, you know, when you use it, it's regular uh, SQL, uh, regular, um, uh, regular standard SQL, but behind the scenes, we are a columnar database. Uh, so here it says columnar storage, and I see Vertica described as columnar storage or column store. 
I wish they'd stop doing that because we're fully columnar. We are not just a column store database. We're fully columnar, designed from scratch to be fully columnar. We're not a row store database where they kludged on column store and then uh, the data after it's retrieved is quickly turned back into a row for processing. We don't do that. We process the data in columnar format. It's a performance advantage that you're not gonna find from other databases. And they're never gonna get it unless they wanna rewrite their kernel from scratch I don't think that's going to happen. Um, we have, so of course, columnar storage, fantastic for reducing I.O. You've got, you know, 100 columns in your table. Your query only uses three. You only need to have the I.O. overhead of three. We also have compression. We have great compression. Uh, there's a lot of synergies between column storage and compression. We also have great encoding. Uh, really reduces I.O. Um, we are massively parallel processing. Okay, who, who isn't nowadays? Okay, that's, that's required. I understand that. Um, our queries are distributed well over all the nodes of the cluster. We have no single point of failure. We never have had a single point of failure. Um, very high availability. And we have, our data is actually stored in projections. Um, most databases, they have tables and they have maybe indexes or materialized views. We have projections and in a column store database that can work better than uh, all those other methods. And I'll be happy to talk your ear off about that if you wanna find me later. Um, how am I doing for time? Pretty well. Okay, so uh, uh, advanced in database analytics. So we, as I said, we support standard ISO SQL 99. Um, we have functions for aggregations, analytics, windowing function, graphing, Monte Carlo simulation, statistical and geospatial analysis, uh, standard functionality that performs at scale. Yeah, everything we do is made to be at huge scale. We're built for scale, scale and speed. Um, SQL extensions, we've got pattern matching, event series joins, time series, and that that includes interpolation. We have great built-in interpolation functionality. We support event-based windows, so you have sessionization, conversion analysis, fraud detection. You can do fast aggregates um, in there. That one little acronym, LAP, live aggregate projections, incredibly powerful, sort of like halfway between a materialized view and a cube, except it's fully live, but the data is sort of pre-aggregated. Um, and if you want to you know, query a trillion rows of data and have a two second response time, that is the, the ticket. Um, for SDKs, we've got, for analytics, we've got Java and C++ and R, so you can write your stored procedures, not in SQL, but in those languages. You can, write, you can write your stored procedures in R that run in the database. Uh, for connectivity, and I'm gonna talk more about this later because we're, we're all about the ecosystem. We've got ODBC, JDBC, we also have OLADB, it's not on the slide. Um, we, interact, we, we interact with Hive, as I mentioned, Hadoop, HDFS. We've got several different methods of integrating with those and have for several versions. Um, flex zone, we also have flex tables. You can load data into Vertica without structure. We support that. Um, then you can apply structure to it later if you want, or you can, you have a lot of uh, varieties because the, the flex tables, they're called, that hold the unstructured data, you can convert back and forth to regular tables. Um, so that supports machine learning, custom data mining, and specialized parsers. For in-database analytics, we have regression testing, k-means clustering, statistical modeling, classification algorithms, page rank, text mining, uh, geospatial, maybe you've seen at other conferences some demos that we've done uh, with geospatial data. Um, so we support statistical modeling, cluster analysis, and predictive analysis. All right, this, this slide's a lot to take in. Um, but uh, the point of this is that we uh, have great integration with other products, both proprietary and open source. Um, and this is a very small subset of them. And this gives you a clue of what kind of things and uh, you can do inside of Vertica and outside. This is kind of like, uh, I asked them to make this slide specifically because I think it kind of boils it down to what the people in this room will care about the most, which is 
how does Vertica work with Spark and Hadoop? So we have a Spark connector. This is new. Uh, we're very proud of this. From Spark, you can, you can access data in Vertica tables. So from Spark, you're hitting a relational database table data. You can also write to Vertica. You can write to those tables. That's very powerful if you think about the different strengths of uh, a, a relational database with Spark. Um, I also have on the other side of the triangle our connections to Hadoop. As I mentioned, we have lots of different ways to connect to Hadoop, but probably, well, my favorite is the fact that we can access ORC and Parquet files as though they were native files on the database with all the full functionality of SQL and a lot of the performance characteristics of, push, of uh, predicate pushdown and that sort of a thing that you can do with uh, ORC and Parquet. We, we do support external files, uh, external tables, you know, based on CSV and things like that, but you can't, you can't do predicate pushdown on CSV. Um, and I guess I don't have to explain that Spark and Hadoop talk to each other. You're probably aware of that. I, I put Kafka in the middle in big letters. That is not our only connector. Of course, we support all kinds, um, but it is one that we're all familiar with, and Vertica has uh, great Kafka support. Um, so this, uh, this just shows you that if you have your data distributed over both um, uh, your Hadoop data lake and in Vertica, in your, say, Vertica data warehouse, um, you can access them the same. They're just, they just sort of look all like tables um, when you're querying them, and you can join between them. Again, full power of SQL. Okay. Do I have time for this? Yes, I do. Good. Okay. So, uh, just, a, just a little bit about performance. So TPC, uh, if you're not familiar with them, are a set of standard benchmarks that are used to compare the performance of software, usually databases. TPC DS is the decision support one. So this is what you use when you want to compare the performance of decision support databases, the type of databases that you do analytic processing on, the type of databases that you would run your organization's data warehouse on. So we ran the TPC DS standard benchmark test on, um, uh, on Vertica and compared it to Impala and compared it to Hive on Tez and compared it to Hive on Spark. Now we wanted to show the performance comparison, but this was actually pretty tricky because of the 99 SQL queries that make up this standard test, Vertica was the only one that could run all 99. Okay, so Impala couldn't run 19 of the 99. Hive on Spark could only run 29 of the 99 standard SQL queries that are part of this test. Um, they, the ones that they couldn't run tended to be like long running queries, uh, syntax with joins and where clauses, but this is, this is basic SQL stuff. So Vertica supports all of that. And so what we did was we did a performance comparison uh, where we could um, if uh, on the SQL statements that ran on these other platforms. And what we found was that Verka co completed these benchmarks in 4% of the time of Hive on Spark. So 25 times faster. 25 times faster, and that's just on the ones that Hive on Spark could run. Um, so that's a big factor, and SQL is the lingua franca of data processing. I know that there's lots of options now, but SQL is still, it's the foundation. Oops, and I'm almost out of time. So let me show you that. This is uh, another snapshot of our ecosystem. If you're looking for logos on that up there, we probably still have them, just didn't fit them on this slide. Um, if you want to try out Vertica, we have a community issue you can try for free. One terabyte, you can run on three nodes. That's enough to kick the tires. Just go to vertica.com for that. I appreciate your time. And come by and talk to us at booth 302 or see us tonight at our free party uh, at King's with bowling and cocktails and lots of fun. Thank you. <laughs>